Hi, I am uh, Dr. Sevukat, uh, working as uh, Associate Professor and Head of the Department of Library and Information Science in Pondicherry University. Uh, today, we are going to discuss about the elements of cataloging. As we all know, the library is considered and said to be the temple of learning, treasure of knowledge and even it is said that uh, library is heart of an educational institution. So, any investment that is made in the library is all intellectual investment. It has to be made use of optimally by the stakeholders of any library. If you want to make it usable or if you want to make best use of the resources that are available in the library, we have to create or we have to provide a tool which can allow the users to get to know about the list of documents or the resources what we have in the library. There the importance of cataloging comes into picture which we are going to discuss what is a catalog and what is the importance of it and what are all the basic elements required for preparing a catalog and how it has to be arranged and what can be the emerging tools that are available for uh, creating this catalog entries. So, before uh, entering into the discussion, uh, we would know we should know that what a catalog is. Uh, it is simply a list of library materials contained in a collection, a library or a group of libraries arranged according to some definite plan. And in the general context, uh, when you look at the definition of the, uh, the, uh, this catalog, it is a list of materials prepared for a particular purpose. For example, an exhibition catalog which will contain the list of products which have been exhibited and a sales catalog which will have the list of products what they are having it ready for sales. So, this has been defined by ACR 2. So, here we have to know the basic difference between the catalog and the cataloging. Catalog it is on the list, the cataloging means it is a process of creating or making a list of items what we have in the library. So, for uh, making a list it is not that what in whichever way that we need we can create our catalog. There is a standard uh, which has to be followed including the catalog card. So, the catalog card uh, what you are looking at the slide is that it is a card of 5 into 3 inch size used in libraries for recording bibliographic entries for author, title, subject and so on. And it is individually uh, considered in order to make them available for the patterns as tool to know whether or not the document required for them is available in the library or not. And uh, before the advent of uh, library automation, each card was written in what was called library hand then filed manually in drawers. So, this catalog card of this size uh, was uh, uniformly followed in majority of the libraries and uh, it was uh, written by hand when we uh, uh, got uh, the printing machine then we started even uh, the concept of library automation came into being. Uh, we started implementing the systems in the library then the cards were generated by printing. Uh, otherwise before it was written by the hand and that too you are going to see in the uh, slides to come. Uh, we have to write uh, by a special uh, writing. So, this is the catalog card size as I said in the previous slide. Uh, it is uh, 5 inches uh, uh, wide and uh, 3 inch uh, height. So, this is a standard catalog card which is followed and uh, you can see uh, when you observe this particular card you know there are two red vertical lines and one horizontal uh, red line. Red line. So, they, they where we have to start the process of entering the bibliographic details. So, and also there are some green lines horizontal. Uh, so, this is the typical catalog card that uh, normally is used in the libraries. So, coming to the card types, there are two types in this uh, catalog. One is uh, as I said before uh, that card with uh, lines, uh, horizontal lines. A uh, top line would be in uh, red in color and the remaining lines would be green in color. And uh, when you look at uh, the left side, left side of this card, uh, 
this it is uh, without that green lines only red line would be there uh, horizontal line and uh, two vertical lines in red color. So, here the first uh, vertical line is called first intention and second vertical line is called second intention and uh, the horizontal first red line is called main line. So, this is type 1 card uh, which is uh, widely used and when you notice that at the bottom of the card there is a hole that hole is for uh, inserting these cards into a steel rod. Uh, which can be kept in a cabinet and uh, that can be used by the users or uh, even for by the staff for arranging the cards this can be used. On the right side what you are looking at as a type 2 card is that it is a printed card with the lines. So, uh, basically when you uh, use by hand that uh, lines uh, ruled cards would be more convenient, but when it is uh, printed with the help of the computer or the printing machine. So, the plain card would be more useful again uh, this uh, type 2 card is more convenient for manual writing. So, this is what about the card and card types that we have. So, here the main core uh, theme or idea of discussion of this particular session is that to discuss about the elements of cataloging. So, when we enter the records in the card there are 5 elements broad elements that have to be kept in mind one is heading descriptive elements punctuation marks, call number and tracing. These 5 are the core elements that have to be considered while recording the bibliographic details in that. So, coming to the first one the heading. So, it is the word or word groups under which the entry is made. This may be the name of a person, a corporate body, pseudonym or the title of the book. So, when you have a book this will uh, definitely have all these particulars. So, the user who comes to the library may know may not know all these fields and he may uh, he may or she may know either or any of these terms. For these terms you know we have to give the flexibility for access to this catalog by giving various options. So, that is what is called heading and in case of name of a person the heading comprises the surname like family name followed by the forename which is called uh, personal name of the person for example. Ajit Kumar Mukherjee is the real name which is printed in a book and that is written in the context of preparing a catalog entry. Uh, the Mukherjee that uh, family name will come first followed by the first two words Ajit Kumar. So, this is how it is printed the reason for having this is that while indexing these cards by author you know all the surnames would be first. So, based on that we can arrange alphabetically. So, again there is one more thing which has to be here while recording the entries in the catalog card we say hanging intention. So, as I said uh, before uh, we can uh, make an entry starting with author name or personal name or the title or corporate body. When we use corporate body or the title we have to start with the first vertical line then it has to be uh, continued with the second vertical line. If this is called hanging intention because we should we are not supposed to start with the first vertical line in the following lines. So, this is what is called hanging intention this has to be it has to be uh, unique to identify uh, if it is uh, prepared uh, with the entry element called uh, title uh, it would be the confusion for the readers to identify even for the staff also the person who is involved in arranging the cards would have the problem. To eliminate such problems we do that. So, this is what is called hanging intention. So, here every element will have uh, the, the areas uh, will have its uh, sub elements areas of description here title and statement of responsibility, uh, edition, uh, material or type of publication specific details, publication distribution etcetera, physical description, series, note standard number and terms of availability. These 8 are the broad areas which are uh, spread into different paragraphs and other uh, structure. So, this now we have to see the descriptive elements one by one in the area 1 title and the statement of responsibility it in simple words we have to understand that title is nothing but title of the book. Statement of responsibility refers to the author of a book. So, here if within the title we have again sub facets like title proper, 
uh, general material designation uh, we cannot say that it is it can be always the book because library uh, holds uh, varieties of documents including non book materials so when we deal with that kind of materials we have to uh, even specify the general material designation whether it is a uh, map or audio recording or cd uh, video all those type of material have to be properly specified for that it is there and the parallel title when we have two different titles for the same book that also has to be treated because we will have all these kind of uh, materials when we acquire documents in the library and other title information if a title uh, was published maybe 10 years before now we want to modify the title and we have to republish it as a new edition so there we have to give that and we have to provide even link to that particular title from where it has emerged and then uh, statement of responsibility is nothing but as i said before it is name of the author so coming to the title proper uh, as an example this is according to rule 1.1 b1 according to acr 2r it states how to record the title in an entry it directs to transcribe the title proper exactly as to the wording order and spelling but not necessarily as to punctuation and the capitalization so here uh, the thing that we have to understand is that because we are physically getting all the documents which have already been published so the published documents we have no right to modify any content in that so what has been printed on the cover page in the book that has to be exactly recorded provided we have to follow the rules how it has to be recorded so the title proper is written from the second intention as i said before and continued from the first intention so this first is entry element it is called author name then the 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 one which has been underlined with the red color is the title so title is uh, uh, written uh, starting from the second uh, vertical intention uh, from there then you have to write the statement of responsibility by separating uh, by uh, proceeding by a diagonal slash by the author name so this is how the title proper has to be recorded in the card then uh, coming to the general material des uh, designation this is again uh, based on the acr uh, rule 1.1 c1 they have categorized into two different groups one is british agencies and uh, north american agencies so as i said before uh, we cannot have only books in the library we have variety of sources in the library but every source has to be properly uh, processed and it has to be treated in a proper way uh, following the rule uh, particularly the uh, anglo american cataloging rules so here they have given different uh, headings uh, branches for the non book materials but like uh, braille cartographic material computer file graphic and so on and uh, similarly for north american agencies they have a long list uh, compared to the british agencies and they have given uh, all the materials apart from uh, monograph uh, for that we have to treat but this uh, the terminologies which have been given here has to be properly specified in the catalog card what type of material that we are uh, processing that uh, while recording the document so coming to the parallel title uh, it is uh, again treated based on the rule 1.1 d1 it is a title in another language or script it has to be recorded in the order found in the item to be catalogued the parallel title one thing we have to notice here is that while uh, having two different titles for the same document that also has to be properly recorded to make the users aware of the title what was earlier and what is now so the uh, uh, equivalent title also has to be properly given so that equal title has to be treated by using the punctuation equal sign simply for example you can look at this card uh, i have uh, simply underlined to make it that uh, on world government equal to uh, the mono uh, the monarchia so these two are the equivalent titles equal title parallel parallel both have to be recorded but the both cannot be recorded without any connecting symbol so that has to be separated and the user should be able to know that these two are different but uh, related to the same document so here it is uh, separated by using equal sign so other title information uh, other title information such as subtitle is to be given following the title proper or parallel title to which it pertains so here uh, one title may have simply for example electrical technology a practical handbook they may give both 
So, electrical technology is the main title, a practical handbook that also has to be specified in the title, but that has to be separated by the punctuation colon, colon has to be used for, uh, there may be 2-3 uh, subsections also within the title. So, main title has to come first and it has to be the subtitles have to be recorded by preceding uh, the colon symbol. So, in case of lengthy titles, uh, some titles may be too lengthy, uh, particularly when we find uh, some uh, thesis uh, in the libraries that also has to be catalogued. So, when you find the long lengthy titles, you know uh, that card or the any other thing may not allow the characters which have to be recorded in that. In that case, uh, we have to uh, shorten the title provided we should not, we are not allowed to omit more than uh, f 5 words we have to, first 5 words we have to take into account while recording this entry. So, that is a must you have to keep in mind. Then coming to the statement of responsibility as I said before, the statement responsibility is nothing but the author of a book. So, it is the author statement relating to the work. The punctuation used for statement of responsibility is that it is a diagonal slash immediately after the title you have to use this uh, diagonal slash. From there you have to start writing the author names. Again there are ways to write author names that we will discuss later at length. If there are uh, uh, more than one statement of responsibility, each uh, has to be preceded by a semicolon uh, other than the first author. So, like I was telling uh, you for the title when you uh, uh, write that main title will be there, then you have to use the colon for that. But in the case of statement of responsibility which means the author name, uh, when you have more than uh, 2 or 3 authors. So, you have to start with the first author, then you have to uh, include, you have to write the other uh, uh, names of authors uh, provided, you have to use the punctuation mark semicolon. So, edition area, this is another area according to 1.2 b 1, the edition statement has to be transcribed as found on the item. So, here the edition is when it is uh, published for the first time, it will be the first edition. If any modification required in future uh, based on the latest developments that have to be incorporated in a book, the book has to be revised and it has to be updated. After updation, you cannot publish uh, the book as the same edition and we have to give the name for that. It is, uh, it will be the uh, next edition may be second, uh, third, fourth and so on. Uh, it depends upon the number of revisions that the author makes. So, here the standard abbreviations and num numerals have to be used in place of words. For example, if it is fourth edition printed on a book, while writing in the card it has to be fourth ed in the abbreviated form that has to be written. Similarly, sixth revised edition, it has to be sixth revised edition uh, as I mentioned you know sixth rev dot ed dot. So, this is the way and the procedure to be followed for recording the editions area or edition statement in a card. The punctuation uh, is, so once uh, the uh, title and the statement of responsibility is over, you have to separate that by using the punctuation like full stop, space, dash and space. So, I have mentioned within bracket in red color dot space dash space and the transcribed after the statement of responsibility. So, I have clearly mentioned the card in the example that uh, fourth edition and this one within bracket the editor uh, detail also is given uh, after the statement of uh, there are two things here one is statement of responsibility for the title and the for the edition there will be another statement of uh, responsibility both have to be treated properly and when we uh, see the examples that would be all the more clear to you. So, material or type of publications uh, details uh, specific area this is the third area. This area is not used for printed monographs, but used in the description of cartographic materials, music, computer files, serial publications, microforms and in some other circumstances wherever it is relevant and required. So, in this example I have mentioned that uh, I have given the title uh, within uh, square bracket, so square bracket I have mentioned map, map means it is uh, one of the cartographic materials. Uh, which has been uh, in the library and that has to be catalogued. 
So, here we have clearly specified that it is a material that belongs to cartographic materials. So, that has to be clearly mentioned. So, the physical description area, this area includes the details of an item like number of volumes, pages, illustrations and size. So, this is also known as collation. Uh, this has to be uh, started in the next paragraph uh, using this, uh, uh, new, uh, this uh, numbers uh, Roman letters. Uh, uh, comma then textual pages and if there is any illustration or color maps included that has to be mentioned and size also has to be specified. So, coming to the series area there uh, the some publishers may have their own series like sham series uh, when they publish uh, some particular books. So, that series also has to be uh, specified uh, for that you know the punctuation is full stop space dash and space that is the one like uh, we use it for edition statement. And some series may have further details like editor of the series, sub series, series number, ISBN, etc. So, all those things have to be recorded and series uh, has to be one, this is one of the areas. So, coming to the note area, at times all the information about a document cannot be given in the areas so far stated. So, here some uh, uh, the books will carry the additional information like nature or scope or artistic form language, source of title and so on whatever has been listed here. So, this also would accompany, accompany in the uh, book as a note. That note also has to be mentioned in the catalog card. And uh, examples of note area simply for example, adoption of uh, Geetanjali uh, slash R and Tagore. So, this was originally published in London by the publisher Gray in the year 1871. And the same thing is published again as the revision of second edition in Delhi by Vikas publisher in the year 1980. But this cannot be uh, mentioned in the book, but this can go as a note. So, this note also has to be specified and uh, which has been mentioned in the card. Similarly, you will find some notes like for children aged 7 to 12 issued also on cassettes as accompanying material and the library lacks volume particular volume 3 and the library has volume 1. 4 to 8, the remaining it means that remaining volumes are not available with the library, it is missing. So, similar standard number uh, ISBN or ISSN may be written in a separate paragraph as uh, shown in the example. So, give uh, such number with the agreed abbreviation and uh, standard spacing or hy hyphenation. So, here uh, how it has been written in the book that has to be copied as it is with the prefix ISBN uh, like I have written here. So, this uh, again call number this is very important, this is the number that helps uh, the users to locate the document where it is available. So, it consists of class number and book number in the example given a uh, 418 which is written on the top of the left corner, it is a uh, class number that uh, uh, refers to the title, title of the book and CAR is the first three letters of the name according to Carter's principle. So, combining both together it becomes call number. So, this call number as I said before helps the user to identify the location of a document where it is available and he can go with the help of this number to the rack concerned from there he can uh, pick out the book and he can make use of it. So, coming to the access number this is totally different from the call number. This is it is nothing but the serial number given in the library for each document. So, this uh, libraries may not transcribe the access number in the added entries. As I said before since it is elementary there are two types of entries. One is main entry the other one is added entry. So, whatever the entries that you have in the tracing section we have to prepare the additional entries. So, this uh, the uh, there is no uh, hard and fast rule for writing this access number in the card, but uh, to make it uniform we write this number in the fifth line of the card. So, this is a skeleton card, uh, the call number with all the bibliographic 8 areas of main entry what I have mentioned call number, access number, name of the author, title, subtitle, name of the author 1, then if there is any editor uh, they will be considered as collaborators then edition statement, publication details, uh, then uh, number of pages, uh, the physical description area and the series if there is any entry for the series, ISBN or ISSN and note everything has to be written. So, this is the skeleton card which uh, contains the entire details what we have mentioned the 8 areas of main entry. So, if you want to know about the reference links you know the latest developments what has happened in the cataloging uh, area. 
So, these two links will help you one is uh, this is uh, the screenshot of the link from there you will be able to know in case of any uh, problems in cataloging the documents based on ASAR 2 uh, this site will help you similarly this is also the site. So, this uh, based on that no, you as I said at the beginning uh, this catalog is uh, the key tool key tool which will allow the users to know first of all about the documents available in the library and also it makes the users to make best use of the resources in the library for that librarians library professionals who are working in the library have to take a lot of initiatives to make the catalog properly for sharp arrangement uh, in the shelves. So, when it is arranged sharply uh, for that we have to have that unique uh, numbers. So, number as I said uh, the call number uh, uh, allows one to arrange sharply in the shelves and also it uh, in turn helps the users to identify and retrieve the documents from the shelves without any great difficulty. So, here uh, the knowing uh, the elements of cataloging is uh, really essential for library professionals who, who are in the profession and who are going to enter into the profession. So, these are the basic elements that we have to clearly understand how a catalog looks like and what is the importance of it and how, how much care we have to take to prepare the catalog cards meticulously and how to arrange it and how to make it available for the users. So, see the, these are the basic things which are required because anything that is uh, available in the library that has to be made use of. We have to identify the potential users. If you simply remain uh, silent uh, without taking proper care or the initiative to make use of the resources, so that would be a dead investment. So, in the library only thing anything that is invested it is only for intellectual uh, productivity. So, if there is no productivity we are also responsible for that. So, librarians have to know about the basics of cataloging. Uh, there are so many developments which have taken place now, but even the whatever the tools that we have today, the basic, uh, the root, uh, the grass root, uh, the main uh, source of having these kind of sophisticated tools today is only the conventional catalog forms that uh, what we have discussed so far. Uh, this I, I hope uh, the elements that we have discussed here as eight areas of main entry would. Uh, benefit you a lot to implement uh, to know the concept and implement the same in your library. Thank you.